predicting every NBA first round series. The New York Knicks will have 15,000 fans at MSG, and while the King lived up to the hype in his matchup with Steph, stay tuned to see if LeBron will take down a dangerous Phoenix Suns team and every team that'll advance to the next round. Just a heads up, I know some game ones tipped off today, but to be clear, these predictions were made before the playoffs began. The first series I'll be predicting is the number two versus the number seven seeds in the East. The powerhouse Brooklyn Nets are taking on the banged up Boston Celtics. He's only 19 years old, yet Jason Tatum became the first player in play-in tournament history to drop 50 points. But he'll have his hands full against a super team facing all the pressure in the world. The beard James Harden along with KD and Kyrie have been on the court for only 5.8% of the Nets regular season minutes played, so playing against the defensive pressure that the playoffs provide and having to build up continuity simultaneously will be a massive challenge. And stopping a young phenom in the shock rating artist in JT is going to be damn tough as well. Tatum's scoring versatility is special, as he can back you down and fade away, create shots in the pick and roll, as well as attack the bucket with abandon. He's a bona fide three-level scorer, so the hyped-up Nets, who ranked below the Orlando Magic in points allowed during the regular season, will have to give maximum effort in order to hold Jason somewhat in check. But the C's are missing Jalen Brown, meaning Tatum's not going to have much support outside of Kemba, so I think the villains from bed take care of the Celtics, Nets, and Six. Jimmy Buckets versus Giannis Adetokounmpo, the rematch of last year's second round where the Heat ran over the Bucks in five games. But which East powerhouse is going to come out on top in round two? Both teams' top players gave very different answers to the media coming into this series. Jimmy Butler's gone on record saying he's, quote, stupidly locked in, while Giannis said, quote, I don't know if things will be different this year. The Bucks won two out of three matchups in the regular season, showing that things could be a little bit different than they were in the bubble. They did pick up debatably a top five point guard in Drew Holiday, who adds another layer to their offense and allows them to not have to rely on Giannis to create every single shot. In his last trip to the playoffs with New Orleans in 2019, Holiday averaged just under 24 points per game on over 50% shooting from the field while leading the Pelicans all the way into the second round. Another element boding well for the third seeded Bucks is the fact that Atetokounmpo's shooting 84% in the paint. That's six percentage points higher than any other year in the Greek Freak's eight year career. Having said that, there's no doubt the reigning Eastern Conference champions are a nightmare matchup for Milwaukee but adding another star in Holiday next to an already beastly duo in Giannis and Middleton should help Milwaukee get over the top. If they can slay this demon, they could be on their way to their first title in half a century, and I think Milwaukee wins this series in seven games in front of a 50% capacity crowd. The Serbian sensation will almost surely edge out Stephen Curry to win MVP, despite the chef putting up a valiant effort. But Jokic deserves that honor because he's the reason why many people still have the Nuggets going deep into the playoffs, despite their second best player Jamal Murray tearing his ACL. The Nuggets scored 16.8 more points per 100 possessions with Jokic on the floor this year than they did with him off the floor. That was the biggest on-off differential for offensive efficiency among 233 players who played at least 1,000 minutes for a single team. I'm excited to see if Michael Porter Jr. is going to show himself as a future star in these playoffs, as MPJ's going to have to step up without the blue arrow. Aaron Gordon's looking way more comfortable in Mike Malone's system by the game, and Denver's got a very solid cast of talent around their MVP with guys like Monte Morris, Paul Millsap, and Facundo Campazzo, Will Barton's actually out right now. On the other side, it'll be an explosive attack from Dame Time CJ and Storm and Norman Powell to keep the Blazers afloat. The only problem with Portland is that Coach Terry Stotts is an offensive specialist, and this is the 23rd ranked defense in basketball. Nikola Jokic should be able to solve that puzzle, and his cancer and Yusuf Nurkic simply won't be able to stop him but Portland's actually incredibly talented, and I think they make this series tougher than people expected. With how Lillard raises his game in the postseason and the abundance of shot creating that Portland has, don't forget they've got Carmelo Anthony, 
I think they push this series to seven games, where I think they go down to Jokic and MPJ in the Mile High City, Nuggets in seven. We talked about the Bucks and the Heat, but moving on to another rematch from 2020's playoffs as the Clippers and Mavericks will resume their heated rivalry. Which playoff P is going to show up? That'll be the determining factor in this series because for the most part, we know what to expect from Kawhi Leonard and Luka Doncic. But as I've talked about in a separate video this year, the Clippers being different has everything to do with PG-13 and how he looks like a completely different player this year. He went back to his old trainer and he's resembling the talent we saw break out with the Pacers back in the day. A ton of people forget, but in 2013's playoffs, George was the best player on an Indiana Pacers team that got one win from the finals, and he again led the Pacers to a conference finals appearance as the best player in 2014. His embarrassing showing at Disneyland, though, last summer earned him the label of a playoff choker, and he was dubbed Pandemic P after he bricked this infamous shot off the side of the backboard. But the chip on Paul George's shoulder will be a massive one this year, and he's got the talent to prove a ton of haters wrong. LA won this matchup in six games last year, but the Mavericks were missing Kristaps Porzingis for the entire series, as well as their third scoring option, Timmy Hardaway Jr., for several games. Despite that, Luka carried them and had the greatest playoff debut in league history, showing up in iconic fashion. That was all while getting beat up by the Clippers' goons in the process. But Luka and the Mavs were on fire in the second half of this year, and I expect them to seriously put pressure on the new look Clippers. But Kawhi and PG is a damn special duo that's out for vengeance, and while Dorian Finney-Smith is solid, the Mavs have very few options to stop them. I expect LA to take care of business again in the same amount of games they won in last year, Clippers in six. The Wizards went 17 and six in their final 23 games of the 2021 season, building up a dominant rhythm behind the triple-double king Russell Westbrook and the NBA's second leading scorer in Bradley Beal. But every one of ESPN's experts right now is picking the number one seeded Philadelphia 76ers to win this series in either five or six games, and rightfully so. The 76ers have the second most efficient defense in basketball, and they can tear it up offensively as well. Fueled by the same all-star tandem that's taken them to the playoffs for now four consecutive seasons, Philly's looking like a force to be reckoned with. You've heard a lot about the beastly MVP campaign from Joel Embiid, but an under-the-radar factor that's making Philly special in 2021 has been their small ball stretch four-man Tobias Harris. Toby's not only had the most efficient season of his career, but he's improved as a passer, as his 3.5 assists per game and 17.6% assist rate are both career highs for him. His assist rate puts him in the 88th percentile for his position. Meanwhile, Seth Curry with the shot is shooting 59.6% on corner three-point shots. He should be a valuable commodity spacing the floor out, so Philly could be poised for a very long playoff run. In this series, however, I have them taking out Brody and the Big Panda in six games. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see Madison Square Garden rocking with 15,000 passionate New York basketball fans. LeBron was spot on when he said earlier this year that the NBA was better when the Knicks are good, and after a tumultuous 2010s decade, it's great to see Knicks fans with something to cheer for, but in round one, they've been granted no easy task. The Trey Young, John Collin-led Hawks have led a rebuild themselves and are looking to spoil the party of RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. To be fair, the Knicks did win all three matchups between these two teams in the regular season, but the Hawks finished the season with a flourish. They won their final four games, which extended the team's home winning streak to 11 games, which was the longest active home winning streak in the NBA. Trey Young won Eastern Conference Player of the Week, and he could very well be the best player in this series. Julius Randle would have something to say about that, though, and the battle of young firepower is going to be outstanding to watch in this series. The difference for the Hawks could be their man in the middle, Clint Capella, who's been a sensational rim protector. Both teams have a ton of talent, but I'm actually taking the Atlanta Hawks to come out of this series in seven games. I'm really sorry, Knicks fans, but I just think Trey Young is too good. It's going to be an amazing series, though, and regardless, the playoff experience for these young Knicks is going to be very valuable in the future. The Memphis Grizzlies owned the play-in tournament, first taking down the San Antonio Spurs, 
and then beating Steph Curry and the Warriors. John Morant proved himself as a rising superstar as he ended the Spurs and Warriors seasons with electric performances to stun the Chase Center and send Warriors fans home early in San Francisco, John Morant lit up Golden State. You could say it's been a pretty decent year for the 22-year-old, as his name's been in a J. Cole song, and now he's making his playoff debut. Memphis is the youngest team in 10 years to make the playoffs, and they're a force to be reckoned with. But so are the number one seeded Utah Jazz, who were looking to achieve the franchise's first conference finals appearance since 2007 and win their first ever NBA title. D. Mitch averaged nearly 36 points per game in last year's playoffs and dropped two 50-point games, albeit in a heartbreaking series loss to Denver. But that was without their second scoring option, Boyan Bogdanovich, who's healthy in 2021 and has been cooking as of late. Triple bogey is going to ease the pressure off the spider Donovan Mitchell, who was forced to manufacture every single shot last year. Boyan dropped 48 points on the 7th of May and averaged 29.7 points per game over a six-game stretch this month. John Morant may have proved himself as a future superstar. The Grizzlies will be a problem for years to come, but Utah's ready to win now. Jazz in five. Now for the series you've been waiting for in the Phoenix Suns versus the LA Lakers. Even though they're the number two seed, the kids from Arizona, led by a lethal backcourt tandem of Chris Paul and Devin Booker, aren't being picked to win this matchup. Despite Vegas favoring their adversaries, Let's give some big time props to the coach of the year, Monty Williams, and of course, the veteran mentorship from CP3, which has turned Phoenix into a title threat. Surprisingly, this is Chris Paul's first playoff matchup with LeBron James, as the two have a combined 34 years of NBA experience, and they've developed a brotherhood along the way. But there'll be no love lost between these two, and while I expect Paul to be competitive, there's no doubting that the best player in this series by far is King James, and I expect LeBron to assert his will on this series and absolutely dominate the mostly inexperienced young sons. Both Skip Bayless of Fox Sports and Stephen A. Smith of ESPN have labeled LeBron's 40-foot game winner in Curry's face as a lucky shot. Meanwhile, the Zero Ring King, CJ McCollum, has been letting chirps fly on Twitter regarding LBJ's eye injury, calling James the actor of the year. Not that he needs any extra motivation, but I expect the best player on planet Earth to leave no question as to whether or not he's a clutch player and own fourth quarters against the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers have the number one defense in the NBA, so while D-Book's playoff debut will be fun to watch, and young players on the wing like Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson are no joke, I expect this to be a walk in the park for AD, LeBron, and the Lake Show. Lakers in five. But let me know which series you're most excited to see play out. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops. You're the best for sticking around. This was dflow, and I'll see you next video.